Hey out there, this is Mitchell from Gamefront. There are a lot of combo weapons in Dead Rising 3. Some super useful, others not so much. So, in order to help make your survival in the zombie apocalypse a little bit easier, here is a survival guide containing the top 10 most useful combos in Dead Rising 3 and where to find them, in no particular order. Heavy Metal is a pretty standard weapon whose beauty is in its simplicity. Found on top of this bus near Rhonda's garage, the Heavy Metal should be your go-to melee weapon in the early goings of the game, namely because it's so easy to find. 2x4s and lead pipes themselves are super common, but then you can make it even easier to create by spending a single skill point in the blunt weapons category. Then all you have to do is get two blunt weapons of any kind and mash them together. The Electric Staff is an extremely useful weapon by itself, as is the Electro Fire Staff. But the Electro Ice Staff is the weapon they can really do a lot of damage with. All of the blueprints for the staff can be found at these locations in Almuda. There's also a fourth blueprint that basically combines all three elements into one weapon, but the ice power is so much better than the others, there's really no reason to switch. Simply go into aim mode and fire this baby into a huge crowd of zombies and just watch your kill combo skyrocket. It's got a ton of ammo, so if you're looking to rack up a thousand zombie kill combo, this is one of your go-to weapons to do so. Found during the psychopath battle against Hilda, the Tsar will become your go-to ranged weapon for the remainder of the game. It's got a ton of ammo, it's extremely powerful, and can make quick work of psychopaths, especially once you put skill points into the ranged weapon category. The best thing about it though, is how easy it is to create. Put a single skill point into firearms and you'll be able to create a czar by simply combining any two guns together. Food combos are some of the most important combos in Dead Rising 3, even to the point where I'd recommend putting your very first skill point into the food category. But none of the food combos are more important than Energizer. Created by combining two foods of the mug symbol, a mug and a bottle, or a mug and pills, the Energizer makes players invulnerable for a short period of time. This is invaluable for later missions that put you up against heavy fire from soldiers, since you can use a time when you're invulnerable to rush up and smash face with your melee weapons. The Ultimate Grim Reaper is easily one of the most devastating melee weapons in the game, and you can get it really early on too. Every blueprint is located in Ingleton and can be obtained without having to unlock any doors. This weapon is your go-to for farming PP and also for dealing with soldiers or other powerful zombies who have a habit of getting out of the way when you hit them. Its special ability to get more ammo after each enemy it kills is extremely valuable and makes this weapon last much longer than your standard melee weapon. Obtained at the military base in Chapter 4, you don't get the split shot until about halfway through the game. But once you do, it makes traveling through the sea of zombies much easier. The split shot mows through crowds of zombies and nets you a pretty substantial amount of PP as well. Make sure to put a point into the blunt and ranged weapons item categories so you can easily make a split shot simply by combining any firearm with any blunt object. The Electric Crusher is another devastating weapon, obtained fairly early on in the game and it will be a lifesaver if you find yourself in the middle of a crowd of zombies. A single strike from the hammer will send out chain lightning that will jump from zombie to zombie, taking out a whole mess of the undead with just one attack. The attack itself isn't that powerful, which is why I wouldn't recommend this over the Ultimate Grim Reaper or the Electro Ice Staff if you're looking to net large amounts of PP, but it's still a durable and reliable weapon for cutting through a zombie horde. The Freedom Bear and its many, many different varieties are a mainstay of the Dead Rising series now, and like in Dead Rising 2, they're still a great way of racking up PP and diverting the attention away from you. As I said, there are many, many different types of the Freedom Bear, each one with their own use. Personally, I like the Cuddly Bear, which plays music to attract zombies towards it, allowing you to clean them up while they're distracted. Nothing stands in the way of the Roller Hog. A steamroller packed with a massive flamethrower and backed by a motorcycle engine? There are lots of super cool vehicle combos in Dead Rising 3, but none match the versatility and outright disregard for anything placed in front of you as the Roller Hog. You can pick up its blueprint after defeating the motorcycle gang early on in the game. If you ever grow tired of the heavy metal as the go-to weapon that you can always have on hand for when your powerful weapons break, why not give the flaming sword a try? 
able to cut through zombies like a hot knife through butter, the flaming sword is a fast and effective melee weapon that hits in a wide radius, making it relatively safe to just cut your way through a horde of zombies, setting them all on fire as you go. You can find this weapon inside a locker at the Sunset Hills High School. And that's our pick for the top 10 most useful combo weapons in Dead Rising 3. What do you guys think? Agree? Disagree? What do we miss? Let us know in the comments and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.